All right, so here's the website that we'll be designing in this tutorial. So as you can see here, this is a wedding website. It's very clean and it's very, very elegant. Now, what I've done here is I've also linked up these buttons to the booking application. So let me just show you how that booking application works. So if I come over here and click on bookings, it's gonna take us now to our bookings page and this is actually fully functional. So over here, I can choose my dates, I can choose my time, click on next, schedule the meeting, and pretty much my meeting is scheduled, the email is sent over, and we are good to go. Now over here, we also have our dashboard. So we can see all our total bookings over here, we can see our total guests, and so on. Now if I refresh this, now I've just entered a booking. So you can see here, we have two. So if I click here, it tells you where these bookings are. I can go deep in and see the details as well. So this one here is telling me it's booked at October the 14th, the time. This one here is for a hotel. So you can see here the location here has been also set. So let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so before we get started, building our website, we are going to need to choose a very good hosting company. And the company that I recommend is Cloudways. Now, this is a very solid platform. It's very secure and its architecture is on cloud computing. So cloud computing really makes everything really fast, which is what you need for your website. So we're going to start off with a free trial. Now I'm going to leave a link in the video description below to go ahead and sign up for a free trial as well. All right, so let's go ahead now and click on start free trial. Now setting up this is very, very easy. All I have to do is to head over here, enter my email address, my first name and last name. So now we're back onto our Cloudways dashboard. And you can see here, these are different servers that we can choose. We can even go with Google, AWS, and so on. Now, I like using Vaulter, so I'm gonna go ahead with that. So take a look here. You can actually define how much power you want your server to have. So if you know for a fact that you're going to be running really powerful uh, websites, you can just start upgrading it here before you even start setting it up. So you can see here, it goes in steps. So because what we're doing here is very basic, and this is also going to be a $30 monthly. I'm gonna set it to two gigs and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on launch. But before I do that, I also wanna come over here on location and just add your location that you're in. So I'm in Europe, so I'm gonna look for, I'm pretty sure it's London. So this just makes my website faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that and click on launch now. So you can see here, it says adding server approximately 13 minutes. So this now is going to be our main server where we're going to be hosting all our websites. Now you may be thinking, well, this seems like a very long process for just hosting a website. Now remember, this server is really good because if you're a freelance designer, you can pretty much host as many websites as you want on this actual server. So it's not just for one website. All right, so our server is ready. So we can see it's right here. I can now click on it to get more information about it. So here we can go for monitoring and see just how our server is doing. I can also go to manage services. So all this is where you get all your information about your server. So as you can see here, let's say you realize that your server is really struggling because your website is very, very busy. You can just come over here on monitoring and then you can take a look at the server health and this will tell you how it's running. So, so far we're okay. And also it tells you the CPU usage and also the disk space. The most important thing now is to set up our WordPress website. Let's go ahead and do that. Over here on the right, we have quick actions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on add application. So our application here is going to be WordPress 6.2.2. Now this is the latest one. And then here we're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call this new website. And then here, I don't need to select my project. I'll just leave this as it is. But if I had more folders, I can go in and really put things in different folders. So now that I have this, I'm gonna go ahead now and click on add application. It's gonna take a while to set up WordPress. And then we are going to go in and install our theme. And by the way, this only takes two minutes. So it's pretty cool. 
All right, so now we notice that we have a new tab, which is application. So now I can come over here and take a look at my site. So remember, we named it new, uh, new website. So here it is. So now I'm going to log into my WordPress admin dashboard by clicking over here. Now these are the uh, credentials. So this is my username. I'm just going to click on that and paste it over here. And I'm also going to copy and paste my password over here. All right, great. So now that I have these two uh, entered, we are now in our admin dashboard. So the next thing now is to install our page builder. And the one we're going to be using today is Divi. All right, so over here now, we're on Elegant Themes. And you can see here, I've already gone ahead and logged in. Now, Divi is one of the most popular premium page builders out there. And this is why I really, really like using it. All right, so let's go ahead now and download the theme by clicking over here. And now back over here on our site, we are going to go to Appearance, click on Themes. And then we're going to go ahead and click on Add New Theme, Upload Theme. Now we've just downloaded it, so we can go ahead now and upload it. And here it is. Double click on that and then click on Install Now. Next, we want to come over here and click on Activate. And then we need to log in and activate our license. All right, so now that I've logged in, we can see everything is all set. Now we have three options of setting up our website. So if I come over here to generate new website, you can see here it says use pre-made starter sites. Here we can also generate with AI and we can also build from scratch. Now I want to take all the stress of building from scratch uh, from you and we are going to now create this using a starter site. So I love using these data sites because pretty much everything is already set for you. So we have quite a few to choose from. So let's say you're working on a low firm website. You can just go ahead and select this one here. Now, when I hover over here, you can also do a quick preview of this site. So we can see here the pages. All right. So let's close out of here. So I know what I'm going to be working on here. So I want to do a wedding website. So let's go ahead now and click on start with wedding. So as you can see, it has our pages here. It has the about, the contact, RSVP, blog, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead now and click on generate and publish my website. Now, if you wanted to add in uh, more pages, you can just come over here. Now, for example, let's say I want to add a booking page. I can just go ahead and do that and click on generate and publish my website. And now it's installing pretty much everything that I need for me to set up my website. Okay, so we can see here our website has been installed and we also have the page that we added in called booking. Let's take a look at that. So here it is. We have our booking page, which is fantastic. So what we need to do now is to install a booking plugin. So we might as well do that while we can. So I'm going to go head over here to my dashboard. So the very first thing I need to do is to come over here to plugins and then click on add new plugin. By default, it installed WooCommerce for me. Now I don't need WooCommerce. Uh, this will be ideal if I was selling a lot of products on my website. So I'm not going to be doing that. So let's go ahead and disable WooCommerce by coming over here to installed plugins. And I'm just going to scroll down here and deactivate. And in fact, we might as well go ahead and delete it. Now we also have this Hello Dolly plugin. Let's go ahead and delete that as well. We don't really need that. And do we need this one here? No. Let's get rid of it as well. All right. So now we are pretty much ready to set up our website. So I'm going to come over here now to Fluent Booking. We're going to go to our dashboard. So on this dashboard now, it pretty much gives me all the information I need to get started with setting up all my calendars. All right. So event type, it says one to one. So we can choose either group or one to one. So since this is a one to one because we want someone to book us. I'm going to leave it at that. And then here I'm going to name the event. So let's call this filming service. And then in the description here, I'm also going to say filming service. But of course, you can go in and add more details. Over here now, it says duration 30 minutes. You can go in and add 45 minutes, 60 minutes, or whatever it is. Or we can really give it, you know, any custom. Um, time location here. Now this is quite interesting. This could be in person. It can be 
Zoom video, it can be Google Meet. So pretty much you have so many options here to go with. So let's say this is going to be Google Meet. So all I have to do now is to go ahead and choose my link from um, Google Meet. Next, we also have our time zone. So let's go ahead now and click on continue. Now, these are the times where I can set my availability or not. So let's say I don't work on Fridays. I'm going to remove Friday. And if I need to add anything here in terms of the times, I could say uh, 9 is my start time. And I can also add in, let's say, 2 till, let's say, 5.30. So I'm going to say 9 to 1 o'clock here so that at least it shows that... I'm not working pretty much throughout. So let's say 9 to 12. Okay, so 9 to 12 and then 2 till 5. These are my availability time. So between 12 and 2, I won't be available. So you can set this up pretty much over here on the Wednesday, the Tuesday, and the Monday, and just set up your times like that. Next, I'm going to click on Continue. And pretty much we are good to go. Now, all I have to do here is to add my link. Now, I can also allow the attendees to select the time duration, but let's not do that. All right, so now that I have this, I can now go to availability. So let's say I know in the next, let's say, 30 days, I'm not going to be around. So I can just say within future and then set my days here. So I can say 23 days. And then I can also set my range if I needed to. Now, I've already set up my hours here. As you can see, it just summarizes everything, which is pretty cool. Next, I can come over here to my limits. So this is the buffer time. So I can set my buffer time here as 15 minutes and buffer time after 15 minutes. Now, this is also important because let's say someone books, I need to prepare. I don't want a situation where I'm just going in and I'm not really ready for, uh, for the meeting. All right, so we also have question settings here. So we've got a name, email address, what is the meeting about? So if we need to uh, add any uh, anything else here, we can always go ahead and customize this even further. We also have our emails. We can also set up our SMS notifications with uh, Twilio. All right, so pretty much everything is cool here. Let's go ahead and save by coming over here to save changes. And if we come back to our dashboard, we should be able to see pretty much everything. So if people now are booking and people are canceling, I can see everything on this actual dashboard. So we are now making this website really function very, very well. All right, so let's head over here now to our calendars. So we should see our calendar here and it has an option here to share. So I'm gonna go in and copy this code right here. Go ahead and do that. And then the next thing I need to do now is to look for my page. So I'm going to come over here to all pages. So remember, our page is called booking. Here it is. I'm going to say edit with Divi. Okay, great. So we have our booking there. And let's go in here and paste our code. So I'm going to choose the text, uh, the text tab and paste it like that. Now I can see we have more text here. I didn't realize that. It's quite a lot of text actually. So let's get rid of all that text. And then just leave our calendar. All right, so I'm gonna save this for now. I don't know why we have this massive logo here. Perhaps this is gonna go once we've saved the page. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna save the page and exit visual builder. All right, so now it's looking really nice. So you can see our calendar is now showing. Now, if you've used Calendly before, pretty much it's the same thing. We can do our bookings through, uh, through this um, system here. So let's say my booking was going to be on Tuesday. I can choose my time here, but let's try on Friday because no, on Thursday. Was it Thursday that we had those different times? Yes, so you can see here, that we can only, my last booking here will be 11.15, and then it starts at 2 p.m., which is pretty cool. All right. Okay, so looks like 
we have set up our booking. The next step now is to make sure that every time we have a button that references booking is linking to our booking page. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, I'm going to exit the Visual Builder, save and exit. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to copy this URL because I know that on the home page we have a link to the booking. Okay, so let this one here be the booking. So I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Right, so let's call this. Okay, and then the link here, we can paste the button URL like that and then save. All right, so now we have our bookings button all set. Now what we can also do is to change the text. We can also change the images if we need to. Now there's a, there's a way to update all this, which is really cool. So let me show you quickly how this is done. So if I come over here now, and let's snap this over to the left. We can go in and make our updates. So by clicking over here, you notice that we have this color here. So let's say I want to change this color. So remember, these colors are on the global here. So I can go in and change this color if I needed to. So I'm going to drag it down a little bit like that. And then I'm going to update it and say yes. So wherever this color is, is going to be updated across the whole website. So we'll go ahead and save. Now, if you wanted to change this font as well, we can also change the font by coming over here, design. Now this is heading text, remember? I'm gonna come over here and let's go with, let's say Poppins. You can see now it's been updated. And let's say we're going to go with light and reduce the size. So let's go with, let's say six. All right. So you can really go in and change all these texts. You can also change these uh, images and add all your own images if you needed to. So as you can see, everything now is all set. Now, what is also cool here is you notice that we have these accommodations. We can also set bookings for these accommodations. Now, let me show you how to do that. We're going to come back over here to our dashboard. So we're going to do this one here for the first one. So we're going to go to our bookings. In fact, let's go to our calendars. Let's add a new one. Okay, let's add a new event type. So this one here is going to be one on one, just like before. So event name, I'm going to say booking like that. Enter the description. So since this is accommodation booking, this is going to be slightly different. I'm going to come over here and click on custom. So this is where now I'm going to say add our estate like that. I mean, I can also add my description. and then display that on the booking. Now we have another hotel here, so I can click and add another location. So this one here is going to be custom as well. Add my location. Okay, click on update. So I'm only going to do two for this example here. So now let's go ahead and click on continue. Now I can specify the dates if I need to, but now I'm going to allow the attendee to select the duration. Okay. So with that all set, I'm now going to go ahead and click on save. And then I'm back over here on the calendars. We can now go in and click on share and then copy this code. And now on our pages, we want that when someone clicks here, they, they get taken to the uh, booking page. All right. So let's go ahead now and create another page. So this one here, we can just call it hotels or let's call it accommodations. Use DV Builder. Okay. For this, we're going to build from scratch because it's easier that way. And we're going to add a single column and this can be a text module. Select that. And then I'm just going to come over here and paste my short code. Now, just by pasting my short code, pretty much it's going to show up my settings here. I'm going to hit save and then exit the visual builder. And there we go. So you can see here we have um, two options. 
So let's say I choose the 16th. I can go next. That's my name. I can choose my location here. Now notice that we have this one here or that. And then I can just add my meeting details here, schedule meeting. And then this is the summary. I can add this to my calendar. And pretty much we are good to go. Now, when I go back to my dashboard, notice what happens. So we're going to go back to Fluent Booking. We should see there's one guest. So you can see here that this now has been updated. And this is pretty cool because I can see pretty much whoever is coming at what times. Uh, so, so this booking calendar can be used for several things. You can use this for one-to-one -one meetings, online meetings, in-person meetings, and so on. So as you can see, I've just turned a basic website into a fully functional website by just adding a single plugin onto our default starter templates. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.